SIR video tutorial on susceptible, infected, and recovered model, also known as the SIR model. Not to be confused with SIR sampling, which we're not going to talk about here. What we're going to do is we're going to pick up where we left off with the last video, and we're just going to add some more of these categories or compartments to our model. All right, so if you watched the last video, you'll see this is the picture we got out because we had two compartments. There was the susceptible people and then the infected people. Now, what we want to add is, okay, sometimes people recover. You know, there's some diseases you contract it and then you never have to worry about getting it again, such as measles. Right? Once you've had the measles, you don't get the measles again. At least I think so. So once you've been infected, you'll never get it again. And if everybody becomes infected, then everything's fine. That's called herd uh, immunity. But we're not doing that right now. We're going to say, what happens if people recover from these things? So we're going to have R0 as our new compartment. And we're going to start off, well, if we only have one infected person, then we haven't had anybody recover yet. Okay. We're also going to keep our parameter the same, which drew this picture, and we could move it around a little bit. You can play with it, and I would highly suggest you play with these models so you can understand what the parameters do. I'm going to add another parameter in, which is the parameter that says, hey, once I've been infected, how long does it take or what's the rate at which people recover at? So I'm going to put this at like 114. Maybe 1 14th of the people who are infected recover every day. Think of about it that way. All right, so I've set up everything here. I do need to change one thing because now I have three categories, right? I have three compartments, so I need three columns here. I have the two columns already, or compartments already set up here. So I'm going to add a, the next one, just like I've, I have here. And then I'm going to add in one other item. But I'm going to put this one in as well because it's a simple copy and paste into this. So we're set up other than setting up the mathematics for calculating moving into this R0 state. So again, we can do the maximum. People are only moving in, so you really shouldn't have to worry. But now people will be moving out of the infected state. Okay, so this is going to be R0N, how many people have recovered up to now. Okay, so, and then we're going to have plus beta 1 times the infected, number of people infected. That's how many people are moving in. Well, remember, this is like accounting. Since these people are moving in because they're becoming basically cured, they're recovering from it, they're coming from the infected group. So we need to account for the fact that these people are coming in by removing them from the other group. Okay, So we're just going to remove them from the other group. And this should give us what we want. We only need to do one other thing, which is add it to our picture. Okay, I'm gonna. I purposely left this picture here because I want to show you the stark difference in how these things look just by adding one extra compartment. All right, so let's go down now. Hopefully you've caught up. Let's go down now and add another line here. So lines one through 100. Here we're gonna have out one, just like before. Now it's the third column and the third column. Oh, I made a mistake here. I need to change that to three. The third column will have the recoveds in it. And I'm going to make this column C green. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that we can see, okay, black is your susceptible, red is you are infected, and green, you are good to go. You've recovered. So let's run this. And remember, whenever you run these models, you have to go all the way back to the initial values because this is overriding them. Okay, so be sure that you're aware of this. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to run the whole thing, and we'll see if it works. We'll see what the picture looks like. And sure enough, the picture does work, um, but we don't get the whole picture on here, so maybe we need to change this number just a little bit because it's pushed us way out here, and we can change the rate so that we can see more of the dynamics. So what if we took half of that? and see what this one does it might blow up who knows up oh, did not work out well on that one so this is what you do is you play with this and see what's going to happen when you do this okay so this is one of the things that you should do is also i didn't run it um all the way from the top like i said you should 
Okay, so this one, nobody, we don't have all the picture on here, and it does calculate everything. But, again, we need to just play with this and see how much and how sensitive these are. And the other thing you can do if you want to see more of the dynamics, which is really easy to do, is just make this bigger. So we can take this out to 200, but play with these parameters and see what they do and they will give you a much better idea of how all of this fits together. Okay, so now I'm going to rerun this. I'm pushing it farther out. It should give me a better picture. All right, so it does. So here the greens are becoming the recovered people. The black are the people who are susceptible, and the red are the people who are infected. And these are the kinds of curves that you see in the news around the COVID-19 epidemic right now. You see these curves that goes up and then they tail off slowly. And make sure you pay attention to they tail off slowly. They grow much faster than they go back down. So that means we might be here a while. In the U.S., right now the data looks like we're about right here. Now this model doesn't match up with the data exactly. That's why we have to add a couple more categories in order to get those models to work correctly. But we're working our way there and we'll cover the next model, which we're going to add into this an exposed group. People who are exposed but not sick. We're going to consider the red people sick, the green people they've recovered, and there's going to be this group out there who are exposed, spreading the disease, but they don't know they have it. All right, but we'll see you there.